yeah uh, good evening yeah, everyone we're live. after uh, a long hiatus we are back with a master class because this question we are seeing that it's very commonly asked uh, in many groups and we thought this uh, class is very important to learn the basic practical points as to when to give uh, ocpil and uh, when not to give it and also like how really effective it is practically and uh, as you all know dr j does a lot of uh, non ivf cycles too uh, in his place and uh, uh, like many a times we are answering it uh, to the person who is asking but uh, this should be something uh, where we want to give a take home points which is like strongly embedded in everybody's mind that uh, when actually we should uh, use ocipil and uh, when it is not going to be effective so ocipil as we know has been used uh, uh, quite often in fertility practice for various reasons some use it to bring down the e2 bring down the lh to synchronize the follicles but is it really going to help in non ivf cycles is it only for ivf cycles and if yes what brands of uh, the contraceptive pills are useful all that we will uh, uh, learn from our today's uh, thing we already have around uh, 186 people who have joined this class which is uh, quite a big number on uh, a tuesday evening where we have uh, announced the class just like uh, one and a half hours uh, prior to actually doing it so over to you dr jay okay We were not doing the classes because Shilpa Madam was not ready. Today she got ready, so we just thought we'll do. I was always ready. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So you can see the screen. Not yet. I think your internet is a little slow. Can you just uh, check or change your Wi-Fi? Yes. now yeah it's a little better can you just go to your uh, writing board yeah i'm just trying to do that see when you speak with those airpods no your voice is a little uh, like very uh, blur as in like the clarity is not there where are you oh huh, yeah can you hear me now yes yes okay okay so uh, hi everybody and uh, i'll just start straight with the oral contraceptive pills all right see remember oral contraceptive pills no matter what you do has estrogen component and has a progesterone component right estrogen component mainly 99% of the time is going to be ethyl estradiol all right and progesterone component we are trying to talk about is fourth generation progesterone now that is important okay what happens in modern day non ivf cycle practice so you basically have two options only either the patient has come to you on day 1 2 3 of menses or patient has come randomly all right now in a non ivf cycle it is important to understand that unless this random okay is going to be in luteal phase basically or in follicular phase correct so if the patient is in luteal phase that is one condition where you are not going to be able to stimulate in that particular cycle all right so in this particular cycle what is the going to be picture in the ovary you are going to have the ovary and then you may have a corpus luteum like this and you may have small follicles and if you look at the uterus and study the endometrium the endometrium might be secretory so in this situation just in case you want to do something for regulation then of course the treatment of choice is going to be dufastone or retrogestron the reason being when you give dufastone and if the patient has conceived in that particular cycle it is just going to add some benefit to that particular cycle all right so this is solving the purpose of luteal uh, uh, window when the patient has visited you 
Now comes the question of day one, two, and three and the follicular phase. So when we look at day one, two, and three, either the ovary is going to be a silent ovary or it is going to be an ovary which is going to have a cyst which is inside. So if I look at this ovary and let's assume there is a 1.5 to 2 centimeter cyst and the other follicles are very, very small or you have a silent ovary which I mentioned and the silent ovary is going to be really, really silent. All right. Now, when you have a silent ovary, the answer is very simple. You can straight start stimulation in a non-IVF cycle. The protocol of choice is obviously going to be letrozole plus HPHMG. We have discussed this many times in our master classes. Now, when you have the cyst, the only thing you should remember is that you should be doing estradiol. And if the estradiol is less than 50, you don't have to worry. You can again switch to letrozole plus HPHMG. Let's assume the estradiol is not 50 and it is 80. Or let's assume it is 90 or let's assume it is 120. That means that this cyst is a functional cyst. If you don't want to waste this particular cycle, then the simple treatment is just go and aspirate this cyst. Okay. If you ask the basic criteria for aspiration is it has to be more than 10 millimeter. Okay. You just go and aspirate it and you give the patient pre-treatment antagonist. So how do you give the treatment, pre-treatment antagonist? You just give antagonist for two shots. Okay. And then after giving two shots, you start the patient on letrozole plus HPHMG. This finishes your day one, two, and three. And now let's assume the patient has come on a follicular window, day seven, day eight, day nine, whatever. And the follicle is already active. The follicle is big. You want to supplement anything, you can either give the patient HMG, you can give the patient low dose HCG, whatever you decide, you can give it to the patient and start the stimulation even in the follicular phase. So basically what I'm trying to tell you in the last five minutes is even if it is a non-IVF cycle, even if it is day one, two, three, random and follicular phase, basically you are allowed to start stimulation everywhere. There is actually going to be no major role of giving pre-treatment OCPs, even if it is luteal phase, because in luteal phase, the treatment is dupastone. Okay. So what are we trying to tell you? That whatever we think that we want to give an oral contraceptive pill to the patient in whatever understanding we have, that okay, we are going to give the oral contraceptive pill and some magic is going to happen. In that particular situation, also one has to remember that there is nothing called magic which happens with oral contraceptive pills. All right. Let's assume you still want to give, you are desperate. Okay, nahin, I want to give, I want to give something like that. Okay. If you really want to give, it will not really change the outcomes of the subsequent cycle. It will not do that. Okay. There is one condition which you should remember and we have taken a master class on that and that is LUFS, that is luteinized unruptured follicles. Okay, what is going to happen is in the next cycle when you see or in the late luteal phase when you see, you are going to see two, three follicles which are luteinized, unruptured and they are going to be persistent in the next cycle. Correct. We have mentioned very specifically in that class that if you have more than two such cycles of LUFS, the treatment of choice is to do a diagnostic laparoscopy and not keep on giving OCPs. One cycle, you can give an OCP and try. That is one condition where you can give oral contraceptive pills as pre-treatment. We don't do that, very honestly. In that also, we do estrogen and progesterone and we give antagonist, pre-treatment antagonist. That pre-treatment antagonist works beautifully. You can't. Uh, you know, end up wasting that cycle for a patient who is desperate for a conception and the patient will have a very good outcome with a pre-treatment antagonist also. But if you want to give, that is one condition where you can give a oral contraceptive pill. All right. Now coming to one thing, one theory which has been embedded in our head that Acha, if you give OCPs, then what is going to happen is that it is going to affect the quality of the oocyte in the subsequent cycle because there is severe suppression of LH and FSH. All right. Now, I understand all these things. Remember, if you want to give oral contraceptive pills, oral contraceptive pills is simply to be prescribed to the patient in a non-IVF cycle for approximately 18 to 21 days. Don't have that thing in your mind that you are going to prescribe is only for 13 to 14 days. That is good for IVF. That is good especially for batch IVF. And that is good if you are actually going to go ahead and plan a fresh transfer in that cycle. In a non-IVF cycle, it doesn't really matter. There is a washout window of seven to eight days. The, when the patient actually comes to you, the patient is also going to come on day two, day three or day four. 
it is not going to be a very you know die hard serious patient coming on day 1 and day 2 so all those small things should not affect your thought process as per giving pre treatment oral contraceptive pill in this situation is concerned all right of course one more thing which you have to keep in mind about these small small residual cysts which i mentioned when you have these residual cysts no in your mind always try to rule out hyperprolactinemia in your mind try to rule out low amh in your mind ensure that the antral follicle count is good because this cyst which we think is a persistent cyst or a residual cyst may sometimes actually be due to low amh may sometimes actually be a para ovarian cyst may sometimes be a fimbrial cyst all these are small small things which you have to keep in mind because if you don't keep these things in mind and if you don't study them properly then even if you give oral contraceptive pills or you give pre treatment antagonists a para ovarian cyst or a fimbrial cyst is simply going to persist all right with this much in mind i finish my 7 to 8 minutes i'll be happy to answer two or three questions and uh, then the rest of the questions we'll answer on the whatsapp so uh, today is a question also in one of the groups for uh, level 1 art centers that we have started yeah. so people were asking that there is a 3 cm cyst after previous uh, stimulation for uh, iui and uh, uh, should we do any to and then plan to do the uh, the uh, stimulation this cycle should we give one cycle of ocipril and then start so is it something very specific to pco or i mean you don't even think that in pco the uh, the lh levels need not be brought down i think we discussed this in our uh, pco master class but then again you give, if you are worried about lh levels you do pre treatment antagonist see that's what i am saying i mentioned right that if there is a residual cyst you can aspirate it if there is a residual cyst and estrogen is low basically then you can simply start stimulation it is sometimes it is also you know and a typical luteal phase development all these things are common so one need not keep that in mind and get worried about that single residual follicle you know yeah and uh, see there is uh, uh, you said now just now that uh, even in non ivf cycles you can do the random start you can do the uh, start from day 4 uh, it, it doesn't matter um but in such situations where like you know the uh, hom the hormones in the body physiological hormones will still be playing especially in poor responders you think uh, it will still work i mean doing this kind of stimulations on uh, day 7 day 8 by just giving hmg uh, yeah madam even... because see that is usually what will happen is when it is a day 7 late follicular phase basically what i mean to say is recruitment has already finished so you are not going to add any quantity to the follicles which are coming in all you are trying to do is you are trying to ensure that that follicle goes in nicely you may not be able to ensure it completely also that's why i said sometimes you will use hmg sometimes you will use low dose hcg based on your criteria at that moment but why should you waste that cycle when a patient has come to you wasting that cycle is not justifiable in modern day fertility practice at all so in case if you wish to give ocipril especially in cases where there is uh, uh, lute uh, luteinized unruptured follicle so do you advise to give complete 21 days or do you give 15 days it's better to give 21 days when you are suspecting lufs lufs two three things one is pid as we discussed second is adhesions third is endometriosis one has to remember lufs small you know peritoneal endometriosis is a big cause big cause of developing lufs keep this if you can go through our master class on lufs we have beautifully given an algorithm to that you know yeah so there are varieties of uh, ocipils in the market right from like you know progesterone only pill i give ocipil. dronit 30 okay, okay. that is ethinyl estradiol 30 micrograms and drosperin on this is what i give it is a fourth generation progesterone you prefer to give a fourth generation progesterone because of the limited androgenic limited mineralocorticoid glucocorticoid activities of that progesterone apart from that if somebody is saying no no i want to give uh, novel or suppose it's fine somebody wants to give overall l it's fine we don't want to give overall g because that is 50 micrograms that is something which we don't want to give so much estradiol 30 micrograms of ethinyl estradiol is more than enough what about dronis p which has only progesterone 
I always like to give ethinyl estradiol, madam, because when you give ethinyl estradiol, the serum SHBG levels, no, basically serum hormone binding globulin levels, no, they are going to shoot up, and any atypical activity of the steroid, no, is going to be controlled by giving that singular cycle of OCPs. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so apart from this, like uh, in uh, say like uh, hemorrhagic cyst, when we are talking about uh, hemorrhagic cyst and E2 is normal and still people... Yeah, that stimulation. Yeah. So people continue giving pills for two cycles, three cycles. That stimulate. Yeah. Uh, so in cases of endometriosis, like, you know, a small cyst of two centimeter, three centimeters. So do you think uh, giving pretreatment pills will somehow like, you know, reduce the activity and the anti-inflammatory, like, you know, the inflammatory markers will come down in these no, cases? No, 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 no not at all. Okay. Uh, so I'll just check the chat box as to choice of OCPL you have told. What do we do with high LH? So you answered that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so protocol, pretreatment, pretreatment, preferred. Yeah, I think we have covered most of it. So the bottom line is like uh, OCPL is not going to help unless there is an LUF. And uh, also, if at all, if uh, there are two cycles of... And, uh, and just in case you have given OCPs, you have done nothing wrong. That is also a take-home point, right? Yeah. There are people who... There, there is no take-home point telling that don't give OCPs. It is just that even if you don't give, it is equivalent. Understanding? It is like that, you know, some people keep on harping. When you give letters, all no need to give luteal based support. But there is nothing which tells that if you give luteal phase support with letrozole, you are going to be hanged in the center of the street. No, nothing like that. So nothing. If you don't give pretreatment with oral contraceptive pills, it's equally justifiable. If you give for a cycle or so, you want to give your choice. But I have given you an algorithm which states that in 99% of the situations, apart from LUFS, you will not have to give it at all. Don't yeah. waste that cycle for the patient. What I mean to say is that. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you very much. I think it was wonderful uh, practical points which you discussed. So, we'll see you again in case, uh, yeah, if we come up with a new topic.